Hey everybody, I'm here to talk to you about brine shrimp and the reef tank aquarium and how sustainable it can be. So here's the reef tank. It's been going for 10 years. I've suffered old tank syndrome, crashes. Uh, I will tell you one thing. I bought a coral offline and put it in this tank with about $3,000 worth of very rare SPS corals that I had been growing for about eight years. And the little frag that wasn't nothing special actually had a disease and it ran through my tank and killed every single thing in it. So the point being, you need to quarantine fish when you get them and corals. I can't stress that enough. Don't play Russian roulette with your aquarium. So here's the tank. This is my newest addition. This is the mangrove tank with live plants and dwarf seahorses. All right, so I'm going to take everything apart and the stand and open everything up and then we'll go from there. I'll show you what's going on. All right, so when I got the dwarf seahorses, I wanted them to be able to eat something, uh, brine shrimp, that would be readily available anytime they wanted it. And what I wanted was something that was naturally grown here. I didn't have to go out and buy anything. And it would be sustainable. If, it's, if I could raise a sustainable colony of brine shrimp, I wouldn't have to worry about these little dwarf seahorses and what they're getting to eat all the time. So what I did was I started with this little five gallon acrylic aquarium. Nothing special. Uh, air pump, air stone, Never changed the water in it, uh, just topped it off. I deliberately put it beside the window so sunlight could hit it. I let green hair algae grow in it deliberately so they could live on it and eat it. But I added some Chato Morpha to it. And what I noticed was all of a sudden the Chato was taken over from the green hair algae. So when it was time to transplant this and shut it down and move my brine sh sustained brine shrimp colony to the new frag tank with the seahorses and the mangrove, I took that giant wad of Cheddar Morpha out of that five gallon aquarium and a couple of these rocks that were in there. You can still see a little bit of green hair trying to grow there, but it doesn't do real well because the Cheddar eats so much more nutrients and is so much more aggressive than the green hair is, it's competing and barely struggling to hang on. So this aquarium, when I put it in it, was just no live sand. It's just uh, dead sand. You don't want any live sand because you don't want anything that's gonna sting or harm your seahorses when you put them in there. No hitchhikers, no bad guys. So I had to wait for diatoms to die down and the whole nine yards, but it's now settled in. It seems like everything's doing real well. So once I put this in here, I noticed at night I had a very sustainable colony of brine shrimp. And as you can see, this is not a two liter bottle hanging upside down with green water in it. And I haven't added any, uh, brine shrimp eggs for six months. So I'll show you what eggs I used right quick. Nothing special, bought it off Amazon. Here it is. They're dry, you don't have to refrigerate them or anything. See the overflow? Straight down there. Right into the skimmer sump. And there's no filter sot there. Goes right through one of these overflows here and there. There's no filtration there. Comes in here, and apparently they went right there to that 30 pounds worth of Chato Morpha. And that's apparently where they have set up house because the amount of brine shrimp, I'm telling you, is absolutely amazing. So the reason I'm taking, you can see it's just about dark on my system. The reason I'm doing this right now, late at night, is so when the lights go off, I can come back on, I wanna show you, demonstrate to you how many brine shrimp actually propagated my system. 
Okay, everybody, so let's start with the frag tank with the seahorses. And we can see. right there they actually swim towards the flashlight so yeah they're, they're everywhere and this tank has not had any brine shrimp eggs added or any brine shrimp added for six months so it's definitely a sustained colony of brine shrimp in here and I think the uh, seahorses probably got more than they'll ever eat at this point all right now let's check the big tank I've never added any brine shrimp to this tank whatsoever, but yeah, I mean, that's the equivalent of a swarm at night when the sun goes down and the moon comes up in the ocean. I mean, they are just everywhere. It's amazing. I mean, there's no green hair algae in here. There's no chetomorpha in here, so they're living in the rocks and sand bed and eating detritus and leftover fish food and then at night they're swimming around getting the nutrients that are in the water and uh, thriving that way okay well I've shown you guys what I did and how I did it basically if you can sustain a system that can raise corals fish sponges crabs hermit crabs uh, shrimp why won't it be able to support brine shrimp as well. I mean, this whole thing was sparked off by one teaspoon of brine shrimp eggs. See you next time.